AI is a great way to improve your Excel formula skills in a short amount of time. But most people use it wrong and not end up getting its full potential. So in this video, let me share with you a proven approach that can 10x or even 100x your Excel formula skills. Let's go. So in this file here, I have got some employee data and I just want to find out what is the total salary for all our male employees. Let's just say you don't know how to write this formula. The first approach is to ask AI to write this formula for you. So I'm going to make a note of our data. Our data goes from the gender he is from E28 to E62 and the salary is in the I28 to I62. Alternatively, as this is a table, we can also say staff table gender column and staff table salary column. For the purpose of all the approaches in this video, I'm going to use chat GPT, but whatever I'm explaining would work the same way with any other AI tools for that matter. So let's go to my browser here and open chat GPT. I'm using GPT-4, but again, even if you use 3.5, the free version, it works the same way. So I'm going to ask the chat GPT to help me write the formula. And by far, this is the easiest, but also the lowest hanging fruit of AI usage. You're just asking AI to do the work for you, but you're not really improving your skills per se. So later on, I'll explain other approaches that I use to actually improve my skills. So let's say, so here is what I said. I have some staff data in Excel. I want to calculate total salary of male employees only. The gender is in E28 to E62 and salaries are in I28 to I62. Can you write the Excel formula, please? When you ask this, in all likelihood, chat GPT would come up with an answer. So for example, here it has given me a sum if function to give the answer and it has also done some explanation. We'll go there in a minute. For now, let's just copy this, control C and go here to my Excel and paste it. So we'll get an answer of 1.280 million. I'm just going to apply currency formatting on that so we can read this clearly. 1.280. Let's just double check this. I'm going to apply filters on my data. Filter for just the male employees. And select this. You can see here the total salary is 1.280. So this formula is actually correct. But let's say you are new to Excel and you don't even know what this is doing. So the next level is to ask ChatGPT what this formula is doing and ask it for some explanation. That works. Can you explain how it is working? And ChatGPT is going to give you an explanation in some plain language about this function. So for example, here it is basically writing an entire tutorial on how some ifs works. Um, and you know, it gives you some examples and explanation of what is happening. If you want to get a cre bit creative here, you can also ask ChatGPT, explain this using my industry terms or explain this in a language that I understand. So for example, let me just uh, ask a question of, let's first read through this explanation. So here it is saying summing based on numeric conditions is an example of some ifs where you can say greater than 100. So you can, for example, ask uh, how many p what is the total salary of all the people that are making more than $75,000 or you can also use it with the wild cards and uh, here you have got multiple criteria where it is using the sum ifs function. So it is introducing you to all of these concepts if you can read through carefully. But let's say you're not familiar with the technical terms and you are a little bit uh, overwhelmed when you hear that language. You can even ask um, can you explain this in two paragraphs just using chocolate industry terminology? Maybe because you work in chocolate industry. So then it's going to rewrite that, but with two, three paragraphs by using some words and terminology from chocolate industry. Again, very helpful, especially if you are new to this thing and you really want to understand, but you don't want to spend time reading through documentation or getting all the technical terms like parameters and options and all of those things. 
So for example, here it says in chocolate industry, the sum if function in Excel can be particularly useful for managing financial and production data effectively. For instance, suppose a chocolatier wants to sum up the total sales generated from dark chocolate products only. An excellent example of some ifs and it gives you that. So this is going one level deep where instead of just asking chat GPT or Google AI or something else to write the formula for you, you're asking it to kind of help you understand this. Now comes the third one, which is instead of stopping here, we can also use the AI to ask for some alternatives. But first, let me ask AI for an important favor. Can you like this video? Unfortunately, ChatGPT cannot like this video, but you can. So if you're enjoying this video, you know what to do. Go, do it now, please. Here it has given you three alternatives using sum ifs function or sum if function with multiple criteria using the sum product function and using the sum and if functions together. Now, unfortunately, with the, the AI models, usually what happens is they learn based on existing knowledge and then the model gets built and launched into real world. So usually there is a lag of one or two years, depending on when this knowledge is gathered. So I was actually expecting that it would show up a filter and some formula as well, where you filter all the male employees and then sum them, but it hasn't come up with that. Nevertheless, it's a great way because one powerful way of learning new concepts is rather than just learning one way of doing, you would learn multiple way of doing same thing. And then your mind will actually connect these ideas better and you will memorize and use these concepts better. Let's say some employees don't have the gender as male. Instead, they just their gender is just M. So for example, here I'm changing Shah Rukh Khan's gender as M. Likewise, Woodrow Wilson and Harry S. Truman, all of their genders have become M now. Instead of giving this entire information to ChatGPT, one powerful way of learning and improving your skills is to feed some bits of information so you can actually learn more options. So for example, here I'm saying, I noticed that the male total salary is wrong. It is missing a few employees. What could be the reason? And here is a detailed response generated by ChatGPT. It is saying it could be due to data consistency, formula range error. That means your formula is not getting the entire data and only reading halfway through or something. Data entry errors or cultural and international variations in data entry. And it has also given me some options to fix the problem. So for example, filter or sort the data to check, audit the formulas, etc. So this is a great way for me to actually improve my skills because if I'm not doing this, I wouldn't have come across these additional options. Now let's try again. And this time I'm saying, uh, this is because I've got some employees as gender code M and others as male. And again, ChatGPT has recommended uh, either using some product or array formula of some and if both of which have this condition built in. I was hoping it would also suggest the wildcard option with M star or something, but it hasn't. Anyhow, here is something that I found even more interesting. Instead of stopping there, AI is also telling me that when I'm building these kind of things, I should think about scalability and maybe add a helper column that kind of checks whether it is male or M and it always tags them as male so that we can use one formula in the end. So that is a very good approach and also works for you in other situations. Now, so far, the approaches that we have taken to use AI are all around the aspect of doing our work. But now comes the next level. And this is where actually we are going to unleash the true potential of AI and help us improve in our skills. And this is where normally what I'd like to do is instead of feeding a problem and getting the solution, I would like to use AI as my companion or my learning partner. So a study buddy like the way that we used to have in school days. So I would ask AI not for an answer, but help me learn. So how can we do this? So we are going to start a new chat session here. And this time I'm going to say uh, we'll take a different problem. I think we have had enough fun with the male total salary problem. So looking at this data, let's say I want to find out who are the top three paid employees. 
but i don't want ai to write the formula i want ai to help me write it myself so this is where we can ask a question like initially i'll say i'll have i have some employee data in an excel table named staff it has below columns and i'll paste all the column names there and then i'm gonna say i want to find out the top three but i'm not gonna ask chat gpt for a formula instead what i will say is i don't want you to write the formula instead give me clues or hints so that's the keyword there clues or hints so you're asking ai to kind of give you some nuggets not the full thing so that i can figure it out myself so here is an answer it is saying to find the top three employees in salary by excel table you need to use features that allow you to sort or rank data and then it has given me a bunch of different options sorting filtering the data large function and ranking so it hasn't given me the answer but it has given me enough pointers so that i can go and do some more research about that the large function sounds interesting can you tell me more about it so here it has given me some more explanation and accidentally also revealed the answers for us but nevertheless, it's a good approach. So rather than using the AI to do your work or get the formula, use it so that you can kind of get some hints and do it yourself. This is because personally, I find that doing something myself gives me much more satisfaction than, you know, pressing a button and letting AI do it for me. I mean, what's the fun in that? So this is where I find that using AI to feed you some hints or clues is a great way to use it to improve your skills. So the next approach is instead of asking AI for clues or hints, you can also ask AI to test your knowledge. So for example, here I have something already built for us. This is the question that I asked. I'm trying to learn the PMT and PV functions in Excel. I know the concepts well. Can you give me some challenges so I can test my knowledge? Make it in a case study format, please. And here ChatGPT has generated three different case studies for me along with some fundamentals. So for example, let's read the case study number three, financing a new car. Scenario, you want to purchase a new car priced at $35,000. The dealer offers you a financing, op financing option with the below terms. Loan amount $30,000 after 5,000 down payment, 5% 5 rate and five years duration. Challenge, calculate the monthly payment for this car loan using the PMT function. Explore how the payment changes if you make a higher down payment reducing the loan amount to $25,000. So this is a great way and it is also a practical thing. So once you understand how this works, you can even apply it elsewhere in your life. And further down here, it has given me some fundamentals about PMT and the PV function. So using AI to test your knowledge is another great way to improve your skills. The next strategy is to use AI to critique your approaches. So for example, here I have built a really simple employee information lookup system where if I type an employee name, I'm going to see their details. Let me first show you this formula. It is basically doing an X lookup on the cell D12 in the staff name column and returning the entire staff row for that person. So if I look up for Jimmy Charter, I'm going to get that person's entire record. And then I'm sending it to transpose so that we can see this information vertically. Now let's say you have built this, but you're not really sure if this is the best way to do it or maybe there is something else. So I'm gonna copy this formula, go here to chat GPT and then ask my question. So I've set up an employee information lookup sheet in Excel. It looks for the staff's name in cell D12 against the staff table with below formula, transpose X lookup D12, etc. Can you critique this and tell me if I need to do anything else? Let's try this out. I'm not really sure if uh, ChatGPT knows about XLOOKUP, but in fact it does. And it has actually given me a pretty detailed answer here. So for example, uh, aims to search for the name D12 staff column labeled name and then returns this. However, the use of staff alone in the third argument of XLOOKUP might not function as intended unless staff explicitly refers to an array or named range covering multiple uh, data points. I think this is wrong because staff is the stable name, so it should always work. But here is an interesting bit, error handling. So if the person's name is not there, our formula would fail. Instead, it should return something like not found. So that is a very good catch. And performance 
and it has talked about using transport on a potentially large range might create issues. Uh, I kind of have doubts about it, but at least it's a good thing to know about that. Uh, array compatibility, so this formula wouldn't work in older versions. But more importantly, things like data security, especially if you're dealing with personal data and accidentally exposing some personal information might be a problem. So being aware of that is a good idea. And adding some user interface niceties like data validation is always a good idea. But what if you want AI to build the charts or analyze the data for you? Do you know that Excel now has a built-in AI companion called Copilot? I explained how to use Copilot to get the results quickly in this video here. This is the one, not this one. Go ahead and check it out. I'll catch you there. Bye.